Hey guys, this is Mr. Roper for Electronic Media Class. And uh, today we're talking about how you're going to animate the character that you created for the Play With Your Food project. Um, as you know, we've been animating some drawings that we've made in pencil first. We brought them over into either Photoshop or Illustrator, depending on what your preference is. And hopefully you've now constructed a character with all of his different body parts that are gonna be moving on separate layers. So as you can see here, I'm gonna do my little uh, donut character. And if you look at my layers order over here, you can see the different pieces that I put together. I've got the body as one piece, the basic donut shape. I've added a separate mouth, eyes, pupils, because I'm, I'm gonna have his eyes move around a little bit. I added a left arm and legs and a right arm, okay? So that's my basic character. And in my storyboard, my character is gonna be rolling in from one side of the screen. He's gonna pop up, raise his arms up, and then he's gonna flex them. And so I actually made a series of other arms, these little buff arms here, they're gonna pop up. The normal arms will disappear. And then his mouth is gonna get really intense and he's gonna get a little bit aggro here. After he flexes, he's gonna roll back off the screen. Okay, so I really had to have a good plan for this on my paper sketch so that I know what needs to show up, what's going to change during the course of the animation, and now I'm in a good position. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the buff arms, leave on just the basic parts here. It's really important that you name all your layers and that you delete any layers that you're not going to be using because those will just get in the way for our next step. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save my donut character. Um, I saved it as an Illustrator file, and I'm gonna come over now and launch After Effects, okay? So while After Effects is loading, let's think about what's gonna happen here. Once we get our After Effects project set up, we're gonna bring our Illustrator character into that software, and it's gonna come in with all of those layers created as separate pieces, okay? So now that After Effects is loaded, I'm gonna go ahead and create my new project here and we're gonna use some settings that I gave you in the Google assignment. So we'll go to new project and I'm gonna make a new composition here. And this is gonna be Roper play with your food. Uh, we're using HD 1080. And what we wanna have it be a perfect square because we're gonna have this used uh, for social media. So I'm gonna unlock the aspect ratio so that I can change the height and the width separately. And I'm gonna make both of them 1080, okay? Um, it's gonna be 29 frames per second. And we're gonna make this thing last no more than 30 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna make my background color white just for the time being. I can always change that later on and hit OK. All right, so here's my basic composition now. Um, and now I need to import my character. So I'm going to go to File, Import. Let's go ahead and open up our little donut guy as an Illustrator file. And this step is really important. When you bring in your Illustrator project, you want to bring it in as a composition rather than as footage, OK? Uh, the difference is when it comes in as footage, it squashes all your layers together and they come in as one layer. If you do it as composition, it's going to bring in all those layers separately. Okay, So I'll sit, say composition and keep it the same dimensions as the layers. I'm going to hit OK and boom. You'll see over here it's done two things. It's created a new composition called Donut Guy and it's brought in all of those separate layers and they're named, which is great. That's what I want to have happen here, okay? Um, so next thing we're gonna do is bring those layers down onto my timeline and we'll put them in order. So if I bring my donut guy down here, perfect, okay? So I bring the composition, the donut guy composition down to my timeline and at first, it's going to look like he's just all one piece. That's actually pretty good because that means that I can keyframe things like, you know, position and rotation and all that. If I make any changes here, everything in the composition is going to change. Okay? And I want that. But if I want even more control over what happens to him, I can double click this little composition. And you see it opens up a new tab. 
that shows me the individual layers that are inside that comp com uh, composition. So that's perfect because now I can uh, change up all these different pieces here. I'm gonna just make this background white because it's a little hard for me to see the arms and the legs. So I'll go to composition settings and I'm gonna change the color to white and that way I can see him better, okay? So now it's time to start animating what's gonna happen with this guy. I know that on the main composition, he's gonna roll in. So let's start there. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna set some keyframes for position and rotation. And at the beginning of my video, I want him to be off the screen. And let's say by like two or three, I'll say, I'll say two seconds just to keep it easy, two seconds, he's gonna be rolling into the middle of the screen. So I've set keyframes. At the beginning, he's off the screen. At two seconds, I want him to move to the middle but I want him to get there by rolling. And so I'm gonna have him roll. Let's see what it looks like if he rolls four times. Okay, so I put four times in the rotation there and let's just check it out. Oh, and he's actually rolling the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go back a step and let's do um, minus four. Let's see if that fixes it here. So yeah, he's gonna roll in. Boop, boop. Okay, and then he's gonna pop up. Now, I'm gonna have him stay on the screen for let's say about eight seconds and all the little movements he does are gonna happen in that eight seconds. So I'm gonna jump ahead here to 10 seconds on my timeline and I'm just gonna click these little uh, diamond markers to set more keyframes. And basically what that's telling after effects is that after he rolls on, he should stay there for a full eight seconds, okay? And then after that point, I'm gonna have him roll back off screen. So we'll move him off the screen now, and he's gonna continue to rotate four times, okay? So let's see how that looks. Oops, have him rotate uh, negative, eight more times huh? there we go okay so now he's rolling on stopping stays there for eight seconds and then at that 10 second mark that's where my other keyframes hit and he rolls back off okay pretty good and this is a very simple way that you can do some animation we could have him jump in from the top bounce up from the bottom whatever you want to do but I want to make this a little bit more interactive. So once he's in place, now I'm going to jump into the actual composition where his arms and legs are. And this is where the real kind of movement is going to happen. So again, I'll go into that, that uh, composition. And remember that this starts at two seconds is where all the action's happening. So he's rolled onto the screen. What do I want to have him do? Well, let's see. I'm going to first tie all of his body parts to his body. So to do that, we're gonna use this little thing called the pick whip. And the pick whip um, ties different parts. So whatever the body does, the rest of the pieces are gonna to do too. So for example, I'll tie the eyes to the body, the mouth to the body, uh, the pupils, I'm gonna actually tie to the eyes because I want them to do whatever the eyes do. The arms gonna to go to the body. The legs are gonna go to the body. The other arm is gonna go to the body. And then the same for the buff arms. Just dragging this pip, pick whip, tying it to the body, the anger mouth, and the anger lines as well, okay? So in this case, I can open up body. I'll open up the transform um, options for it. And I'm gonna set a keyframe here Let's do scale, okay? And you can see if I change any scale right here, all those pieces that I tied to the body also scale with it. But watch this, I'm gonna uncheck the scale box here. And that way, if I have him kind of squish down a little bit, the other pieces will move too. I'm gonna move his anchor point down to the bottom because I want him to squish a little bit. And I'm gonna have him 
squish. Move this forward just a tiny bit. And let's have him just squish down like that. And then go forward a couple frames and have him go back to 100%. And what that's going to give me is this little movement. Okay? Like he's just kind of jumping in there and squatting a little bit. If I press F9 on my keyboard, it will smooth out that movement by adding what we call an easy ease. Okay, so I'm just going to select those little keyframes, hit F9, and that's going to give me a little beep, like that. Okay, so he's there. We're just past two seconds. Let's give him some other movements. Um, I want to have his arms move up and down. So I'm going to take the left arm and the right arm. I'm holding down control so that I can select both of those at the same time. And first thing I want to do is move their anchor points to where the arms connect to his body. So let's take this one. Uh, that's on the right arm, I believe, yet. And we're going to move it right to where it connects to the body. We'll go to the left arm, and we're going to connect that to the body. Okay. And now, with both of those arms selected... I can start to keyframe them to do what I want them to do. So let's open up rotation by pressing the letter R. And I'm going to set some keyframes here that after he's done his little squat, his arm's going to go down. I'll go forward on my timeline just a little bit. And then his arm's going to go back up. Okay, like he's waving with this one arm. Let's see how that looks. So he squishes. Whamp and then he waves, okay? And I can probably have that arm go up and then we'll have it go back down again, okay? This is where the kind of creative part comes in. You gotta figure out what you wanna have him do. Let's do the same thing for that other arm. I'm gonna open this up by pressing R to get my rotation. I'll go back to that first keyframe, stopwatch. At the beginning, I want his arm to go down. Then I'm going to move forward to the next keyframe. Arm goes up. Then I'm going to go forward to the next keyframe. Arm goes down again. And now I should have both arms kind of waving a little bit. Looks cool. Now, there are infinite possibilities of how you can animate your character. And I'm not going to go into all of them here. But if you think about all the different things that are on different layers here, you have a lot of flexibility about what you can animate. So remember, I put my pupils on their own layer. So if I open this up and I go to position, while he's doing his little arm shake thing, I could set some keyframes here where the eyes are going to go to the side. Then I go forward a few frames. And then I'll make the arms go to the other side. Then I'll go forward a few frames, and then I'll have the arms go back to the middle. And so that, because it's on a separate layer, is now going to give me some little eye movement. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. I could do the same thing with his eyebrows if those were on different layers too. I've got eight seconds of animation to fill up here before he rolls back off screen again. So I'm going to just pause the video for a minute, add some of that animation, and then I'll come right back. Okay, so I've spent a little bit of time uh, animating my character. As you can see here, I've got lots of different keyframes. And I'm just going to show you a few of the things that I tried to do as I went through this. Uh, let's go down to my timeline here. And remember that in my main composition, my donut guy rolls in here at the beginning, and then he stops, and this is where he's going to do his little flex thing. Okay. Um, now, I applied a couple effects here because I really wanted to have him kind of sling into place so one of the things you can do that's a really easy fix is if you click this little column, column right here that says motion blur, anything that's moving on your layer will get a slight blur to it to make it look like it's really moving quickly. Okay, So that's a really simple thing you can do for any layers that are moving. I also add an effect called bender. I went over here to my effects presets and I typed in the word bend. And you just drag this CC Bender effect on top of your character. And what it lets you do is you can sli slide this side to side to give him a bended look, like he's really kind of stretching and squashing as he comes into play. 
Okay, so you can see I have him right when he stops rolling. He slings to the side, he snaps back to the other side, and then he finally comes to rest. Okay, now let's go into the main composition because here's where all the action happens. Once he comes to a stop, my character squashes down a little bit, and then he's going to pop up. His eyes are going to move side to side. He waves his little arms up and down, and you can see I put the motion blur effect on both those arms too. Let me close some of these up so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so the left arm and the right arm both have motion blur to them. So when he's waving, they're a little bit blurry. And then right at this point is when I have his buff arms and his angry mouth come in. So to make those appear at that point in time, I just grabbed the, the beginning of their block and I moved it forward to only show up at about three seconds on my timeline. Okay. So right at this point, his normal arms are going to disappear, the buff arms appear, his mouth changes, and these little angry lines come in at the top of his head. Like he's, okay. Now, to give it that wiggle effect that you see there, and let me play this back in real time, you can actually see it. His arms kind of shake and his little angry lines shake. I actually added an effect over here called wiggle. If you type in the word wiggle, you'll see that there's different types of wiggle that you can apply. Gelatin is the one that I used for his angry lines because that makes it all go kind of wavy. Um, for the arms, I used wiggle rotation so that the arms kind of wiggle back and forth a little bit. And when you apply one of those effects, you just drag it down right on top of the thing that you want to have that effect and it'll show up over here. So this is where I can control how many wiggles it has and how fast those wiggles happen. So watch, I'll crank this way up to like 58 wiggles per second. And you can see, watch what's gonna happen to that arm over there. It's like, okay, I kinda actually like that better. It looks like he's really straining on his muscles. So um, I can do that for both right arms. If I change the wiggle speed up to 58, now when he flexes, he's gonna get that really intense wiggle. Now it does that for a few seconds. Uh, and then at the end, you're gonna see that those anger lines at the top of his head, they're gonna shrink down and disappear behind the body. Okay, so I just, for that, uh, went into anger lines and I keyframed its scale so that it starts off at zero, okay? And then it goes up to about 100%. It stays at 100% for that whole time and then in the last frame there, it jumps back down to 0% and disappears. So that's going to give it that effect that it's popping out. Okay. The mouth and the buff arms both disappear at about nine seconds. And he goes back to his little happy self. I had the arms wave one more time. I had his body jump up and down. And by 10 seconds, all of his little animation is done. Okay. So at that point, I can go back to the main composition look here right about nine seconds and then he's gonna wave jump up and down and boop, 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 roll back off the screen okay so my animation is pretty much complete now there's a lot of little tips and tricks in there but it's going to be different for each one of you so i'm going to be working with you one-on-one -on -one during our class time to say hey here's what you want to do here's what needs to be keyframe but i hope that gets you started and see some of the things that you can do to animate your play with your food project all right, let's take a look at it.